I'm here today with James McBain to talk about Hell Ripper, Warlocks Grim, and Withered Hags out February 17th on Peaceville Records. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for, for speaking to me. I appreciate well, thank it. Thank you for, for taking the time to, to chat. Uh, I know the album uh, release is just around the corner, so these are busy times for you. Uh, yeah. And let me start off by asking you this. Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of working on, on an album solo? Like, I mean, it's not the first one for you with Hell Ripper, but what are the advantages and disadvantages of just needing you, everything falling on your shoulders? Yeah, I think the main advantage for me, um, I mean, people prefer working in different ways, but for me, I prefer prefer working solo because the main advantage would be that I can do things on my terms when I want and how I want, you know, with no need to kind of cater to anyone's schedules or availability and you know I don't rehearse we don't have to go to a rehearsal space every week um at certain times and and all that so I can record and write stuff at my own pace um and how I want so I can have I can include whatever I want in the music and I can omit whatever I want from the music you know it's not a you don't have to incorporate everyone's ideas which um you could say is probably maybe the biggest disadvantage that you don't have other people contributing. So things may take longer because it's only the one person working on things as opposed to, you know, two, three, four people bringing in ideas, which may get things done quicker. Um, and maybe as well at, at the same time, different people could have different influences that they can bring to the music, you know, make it a bit more unique, I guess, in some cases, but, um, yeah, like I say, I just prefer working this way just for the reasons I mentioned. And yeah, I don't see that changing anytime soon. I've worked in both um, a band context and solo project, and I prefer this by far. So so when you're when you're left with a conundrum, when it comes to a song or to something related to the album, who do you bounce ideas off? Yeah, so usually I've got... So I have a live band. There's a guys in the live band who... Um, I occasionally message them saying, what do you think of this um, and all that? And I've got my partners very um, helpful in, in uh, helping me decide uh, what, what works and what doesn't. Because, yeah, working by myself, of course, you kind of get like a tunnel vision and you kind of, if you're writing and recording an album, uh, the way the way I do it, I, I end up hearing hearing the song or the parts like, thousands of times so you kind of don't know what's like towards the end you're like is this a catchy song or is it just because it's I've heard it a million times that I can remember it and does this make sense you know and so yeah it's good to have other people to you know bounce ideas off of and I send stuff to my label as well um just kind of yeah friends and my partner and the label and people like kind of involved with the band in other contexts um just to see what they think or if anything's a bad idea if anything's a good idea um so yeah but when, when you look at uh making this album do you set goals and expectations of what you want the next record for hell ripper to sound and feel like or do you more go with the flow of what your own creativity is giving you and then once once <clears throat> that is done you just try to put all the pieces in the puzzle as well as you can yeah basically it's just yeah what kind of comes naturally i guess um but um yeah this time was slightly different i felt i think i got kind of into a a state a, a kind of position where i thought the music had to sound a certain way um so that was near the beginning of the writing process i wrote um two or three songs like two years ago like at the start of the the writing process and when I looked back on them, I thought these sound like Hell Ripper songs, but really forced and uninspired. And they sounded like what I had done previously, but just not as good. So I just completely deleted them. And I thought, OK, let's just go in a completely different direction. I'll just go. Um, and I kind of, yeah, that kind of freed me up in a, in a way. Like I knew that wasn't going to work. Um, so I thought, yeah, let's just try and like 
come in with an open mind you know i've still got the idea of like where hell ripper is at its core you know i want it to be black thrash black speed whatever at its core but yeah this time i went in a completely different direction i wanted to incorporate just anything from any style of music that i was that i'm a fan of because i'm, I'm a fan of different stuff uh both metal and non-metal like not just the black speed uh genre so yeah this time i was just like let's see what can happen if i kind of pull from other influences um and yeah that that felt more natural to me and more um yeah you know less forced it felt like i was kind of yeah being creative as opposed to like kind of keeping myself in a box and yeah it was a fun challenge taking all this other inspirations that i've never really explored with the band um trying to incorporate like you know like non non-metal things things i would hear and stuff like say the beatles or the doors or something and try and make that put that in a black speed context of like of in the hell ripper sound um without diluting the overall result that's like the most important thing you know i don't want to i don't want to change dramatically you know i don't hell ripper i always want to be a black speed black thrash uh band or around that uh kind of uh, space so yeah it was important not to just go completely <laughs> completely in a different direction start you know just doing like drone or doom metal oh, stuff you know? <laughs> yeah and I noticed that the moment I started listening to this record, that the, the the beauty about this album is that it still sounds like Hell Ripper, but it's a very it's a very different face of Hell Ripper when you compare it with the two previous records. So it's almost like you have one foot in the past, but you also have a foot in the future, not even in the present, but in the future in terms of where you can take the band. Uh, is there something sound wise that it would be going too far, like you were talking about uh, changing too much of the DNA of the band? Or, are you always concerned about evolving, but evolving at a pace that doesn't completely destroy what you've done up to this point? Yeah, yeah, it's a, a yeah, it's an interesting question that I haven't really thought about. I think in terms of like going too far, I don't think I could tell until I've tried it. You know, like some things may sound ridiculous on paper, but when you try it or you you, or you add bits to it in the recording process or the way it, it's produced or whatever sometimes it works so in that respect I mean I don't I, Hell Ripper is never going to have like loads of clean vocals and and stuff like that um I think that would be um kind of getting away from the sound a little bit um but yeah it's just kind of I can't you can't I can't really say until you try it really and then you see how it sounds and if it sounds ridiculous um or if it, if it doesn't like really fit then yeah 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 it's an interesting question it's like something i haven't really thought about um because when i'm yeah when i'm like writing i don't really you know yeah yeah that's not on the back of the book <laughs> yeah but um yeah i hope i hope things don't yeah, the aim would be to kind of evolve, I guess, without being too jarring with a complete different direction on each um, like album and things. But I mean, even then, there's like on this album, there's the 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 title track is like the first mid paced or slower song that I've ever written with Hell Ripper, which I guess could be, you know, could be kind of going away from um the hell ripper sound but i still think that song kind of works really well and sounds like hell ripper even though it's nothing even though the tempo is like halved compared to most of my other tracks yeah um, and, and you have two songs on this album that pushed the eight minute mark which is yeah. also something that we hadn't seen in previous record which was more speed short packed you know just let's get in and let's get out kind of track and this album i think you were able to spread your wings a little bit more from not just from uh, uh writing a song but also how you construct the song and how you take the listener on a journey throughout that song which the previous tracks didn't really have room for journey mm -hmm. so when i was listening to the album i was like okay like i said before it sounds like old the hell ripper but it's a lot more difficult to put this album under one single umbrella because these kind of tracks change a little bit of your uh, of the listener's perception of what the album is so how would you define 
the sound experience on this record, considering all of these changes? Yeah, um, yeah, thank you for that. That's basically kind of exactly what what I wanted to kind of achieve there, like with the with what I was going for, I guess. But yeah, I, I mean, again, at its core, I would still describe it as black speed, black thrash. But yeah, there are, you know, elements of death metal and um, you've got the slower track, which is kind of like Bathory, like mid-period Bathory or doing Injustice for All Metallica style. Um, yeah, it's just the tempos and the kind of dynamics have kind of increased on this album just to yeah just it gives a bit of a different experience within the songs um like i said the, the goal with like the previous albums were especially the first album was kind of short to the straightforward to the point um like black speed metal punk two three minute songs you know for the most part so the first album was like 26 minutes long the second one was like 29 minutes this one I think is almost like 43 minutes or something yeah. like that. So 42 and change, I think. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, it's not that the and yeah, it's not that the music's like slower because I think uh, one of the a couple of the tracks are the fastest tracks I've ever done. It's just that within these songs there's some tempo changes and um there's more riffs <laughs> um included. Yeah, but it's kind of offering a different experience overall, just like I say, taking things from all all um different styles of uh of music you know um just yeah i think even this album as well it's more it's even more guitar centered than than the previous ones which were also quite like riff based and stuff but on this album there's like two or three guitar solos per track and stuff so yeah it was just it just felt right it just felt like a natural thing to do um and of course, on this album, you still have the three-minute, yeah. rel rel relatively, relatively straightforward compared to, uh, you know, the eight-minute tracks. Um, there's still a couple of these shorter to the point songs, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's hard for me to describe the kind of experience. It's uh, since I've been in it so long, you know, I've been hard doing the forest from the trees. Yeah, I've been, yeah, I've been like involved in this album, like almost every day for like two years, you know, in some respects. So I'm constantly hearing things. And obviously I hear things that I'm trying to do that other people may not hear. People might hear things that I don't intend to come through. So yeah, it'd be, uh, it's cool to hear people's uh, ideas of what the experience is like, because yeah, it's, I see it in a total different way to others. <laughs> When you when you create an album like this and you perhaps get to scratch an itch that you didn't even know you had when it comes to the construction of some of these longer tracks and the overall design of the album, uh, do you? And I know you're not a guy that really plans ahead. You're more the feel of the moment. But yeah. did you kind of discover something there and you're like, wow, now I want to go down this path perhaps even a little bit more on the next record? Um, yeah, probably. Um, I th I mean, it really depends. Um, this is the kind of direction I want to go in in the future, like right now. But it really depends on the songs I write. If the next album consists of, you know, two minute tracks, simple, as long as the music's good, I've got no problem doing it. Um, there's no, you know, I don't see Hell Ripper as a, ba as a band, like, or music in general. I don't really see it as a necessity to be uh, unique, if you know what I mean, not like... Uh, but like I don't you don't need to always be pushing the boundaries I don't think especially in this style of music it is nice to do that and try and come up with something different but if something works and it's simple one uh, three riff song that's two minute long then I've got no problem doing that um, for me the most important thing is having good songs and anything else like after that you know is kind of a bonus if something unique or something new or something different happens within that I think yeah that's kind of a bonus but uh yeah this um especially on this album I think one of the first tracks I completed was the knuckle of V which I saw you guys reaction to um yesterday um or two days ago I can't remember I've lost yeah. all track of time man <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah it was uh that song was one of the first songs 
that was mostly written and it was like yeah I was going in different directions I slowed down some parts um you know it's a, a bit more black metal sounding in parts yeah overall the album I think has a more black metal influence um kind of overall um though it's not straightforward like black metal it's just kind of I think the the atmosphere or the or whatever um but yeah, so songs like the Knuckle of V definitely kind of helped kind of shape where I was thinking, like where I wanted to go with the future material on that album. You know, I had half finished songs that I didn't really know where I was going to go. And then after having like songs like that, I thought, okay, I can slow things down and I can go more black metal. I can do two or three guitar solos. You know, it works. Um, yeah, each song is different, really. Um, yes. Yeah, it's difficult to say the writing process is just for me is I write songs and see what happens and if it sounds good it sounds good if it doesn't then I change it or I delete it or whatever I mean I think actually yeah a lot of these songs um, have riffs from maybe three or four years ago that just didn't work in the context of the of the other of the songs I was working on at the time for example yeah the the kind of slower stompy dark throne sounding riff in the knuckle of v in the bridge that was written um yeah i think three four years ago for a track on the previous album the affair of the poisons but it just didn't work and i really liked the riff and i was kind of disappointed that it wasn't on that album you know and i had to wait another three years to release this riff that i really i really liked but yeah i've, I've got like banks of stuff from ages ago that um I'm just waiting to use in the right context and it's always such a good feeling when you can do that like you have a riff that just you really like but you can't you can't find a home for it yeah you, you can't find a home for it you can't um figure out where it's supposed to go and yeah i think going in so much different directions on this album or incorporating different things allowed me to bring in more riffs and make them work in different contexts um yeah <laughs> you're, you're you're this uh, the the way you describe your creative process is such an organic way it's not like you have like this vision board and you're trying to like check yeah. boxes which also has a positive impact in the sound mm. because it makes the songs feel a lot more raw more organic but when it comes to the design of the album uh, how important is it for you the track listing the order the in terms of enhancing not just the quality of the songs but also the quality of the experience of listening to the album yeah, I think that's really important as well. And it's something I think it's always kind of um, there, like kind of, you know, in the back of your mind, like, oh, this song would be a good intro song. This song would be a good closing one and all that. Um, it's always kind of in the back of my mind, but I don't really think about it really until near the end of everything. Um, but I always uh, like to kind of start the album on either on some sort of immediacy um for example I like to do that for this album you've got a, a one second drum intro then straight into the the song um I wanted to do that in contrast to the last album which was a slower like a slower build-up thing I'm still quite immediate just kind of a slower tempo in the last album I wanted to kind of contrast um those two and yeah the the closing song is all for me is always fun to kind of do something a bit more epic for lack of a better word um I don't like to use that word like on my own music it sounds weird it's not the <laughs> um it sounds pretentious yeah um but yes yeah, you can use bombastic yeah so I mean the last the last album ended with uh the hanging tree which was a bit different to what I had done before it had some like merciful fate slower parts and all that um kind of stuff and it had the first use of clean guitar I think in Hell Ripper's music um, if I remember correctly, um, I don't think I'd done anything with clean guitar before that. And yeah, this time, of course, you've got uh, Messer Stewworm, which is like an eight and a half minute track with a, uh, there's like 18 or 21 different parts or something yeah. to that. It's kind of. Uh, yeah, not. yeah. So, um, yeah. And in between there, you kind of try and. You try and yeah, kind of make it a journey, I guess. And uh, you've got to think in terms of a side a and side b on vinyl and cassette um as well as like the overall picture of streaming and cds and stuff so it's yeah it, it that itself is kind of uh a 
a challenge sometimes and can impact the the impact of the album um so yeah i did get some like input like i say i'm i'm in the process for so long that i kind of loop i if you get an idea in your head it's difficult to see things another way if you've been doing it for two years so yeah i sent the album to like a bunch of people and i said like how do you think the track listing is and things like that and yeah we changed things around a little bit um based on advice from like other people and yeah I think we found the best way to do it which is kind of like yeah it's kind of yeah the two end on a an, uh, an epic uh, bombastic or whatever <laughs> uh, track open immediate and then kind of in between you have the the more punky songs and the more um thrashy songs kind of uh alternating i guess a little bit and then in between of course you've got the the slower song on the first side of the album which is yeah yeah but yeah like you say it can it can impact the the overall experience i think especially on vinyl mm -hmm. like or tape with two different sides you, yeah you have to try to make them as balanced or as cohesive as, as you can yeah when it comes down to the vocals you mentioned that you'll we'll never hear clean vocals on a hell ripper album i would say never say never but you know yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> i i mean you you may hear something but i mean you'll never hear like primarily like a whole song done in in like candle mass vocals or something you know like oh, uh, i was thinking of you in a falsetto more like a king diamond approach. king diamond <laughs> that, that could work <laughs> yeah but, uh, yeah i mean if it sounds good i'm all for it um yeah like there's some on the one of the tracks uh there's like kind of spoken word part for like just like two seconds or something which was different in a different style um on a couple of tracks there's more death metal style vocals like death growls and there's some like um uh i don't know how to describe it but you know um tortured sounding screams like yeah, almost like somebody's ripping the vocal cords yeah like uh in the bridge part of the title track the the acoustic part where it's kind of like shouting like painful shouting uh type thing yeah i wanted to go a little bit try some different things on the vocals this time um but yeah clean vocals didn't work out this time who knows in the future like you said i'll never say never but i cannot see me going down that route um um i think that would dilute hell ripper sound i don't think it fits for hell ripper for the most part but yeah never say never i guess um <laughs> just never say never <laughs> uh you know maybe... and, I'm, and i'm an awful singer as well i'm not the best singer so um <laughs> i don't want to ruin it ruin the ruin the vibe with like horrible sounding it was like uh, what's happening here you know like uh, that somebody forgot to tell him that this is not what we paid for. Like that, that yeah. would be kind of the feedback you would probably get from that. Uh, yeah. What track on this record do you feel was the most demanding for you, either from a musical standpoint or from a vocal standpoint? Um, I think probably the last song. Like, I mean, it's yeah, it's eight and a half minutes, and it was something completely different from um, what I was, what I'm used to doing. Like in terms of like song structure, um, usually you know I kind of go verse chorus type thing but this time um this track is based on you know um uh some folklore um about mr Stewartworm. um you can check that online um <laughs> um the story of that and i wanted to kind of follow the story with the music so in instead of having like verse chorus verse chorus i wanted to follow what was going on so it would go really fast at certain points and then it would go a bit slower then you'd have something a bit ominous sounding and then it ends on quite an upbeat triumphant kind of thing um yeah i had about so many versions of that track like written um like i didn't know where you know it was difficult to go where where am i going next with this like how can i represent this part of the story best and make it fit the rest of the song fit the rest of the vibe without going completely uh somewhere else that was quite difficult yeah there was there may there may be like 40 50 versions of that song like that i wrote um <laughs> trying to get the right one and yeah i'm very pleased with how it turned out i think it's one of my favorites i've ever done just because 
yeah, I think it's a good song, but also, yeah, it was something new and something I'm very pleased with. Um, try to think about vocally. Um, maybe I think um, the the Cursed Carrying Crown, that's probably one of my, I think it's the fastest Hellripper song I've ever written. And the vocals are kind of, kind of matched the music. They're quite fast. And yeah, so I think that was probably the most difficult to, to do vocally. Um, but yeah, vocals in general for me are, are not, are not the, f the funnest thing to record. It takes it out of you. It's like, it's physically demanding. And if you're ill or if you, or whatever, you've just got to not do it. Like it just delays things further. Um, but it's always the most rewarding part, I think, because once the vocals are done, that's when you kind of hear the full picture of the song, um, which is really rewarding. You're like, oh, this sounds like an actual song now. Um, um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan of doing vocals. <laughs> <laughs> one one last question for you, not related to the album, but considering that you said that you've worked on this record pretty much every single day for the past two, three years, and we can see the background behind you. It's filled with the Hell Ripper merch, boxes filled with vinyls. You got you got all sorts of stuff happening there. What do you do when you're not making music? It's basically music, man. Uh, just doing music in some form, listening to music, writing music, um, doing the kind of business side of Hell Ripper, you know, emails and social media and packing, sending orders. Um, and yeah, if I, and usually I've got like music in the background, podcasts, um, interviews and stuff, like kind of listening to that in the background while I'm doing other stuff. Um, I mean, when I'm kind of lazy and not like doing anything, it's usually I'm just watching TV or or something like that watching videos tv but for the most part it's something music related um, and when you're listening to music are you more of an old school listener or or do you try to discover some new bands that that might yeah. inspire you yeah always try to discover new bands like a lot of the bands i discover as well because i just put on like maybe a spotify playlist or something you know like one of these new releases um, playlist or something and then while I'm packing orders or while I'm answering emails or whatever I've got like this new releases coming in um, at all times so I'm yeah I'm always on the lookout for new bands and new music and I try and keep up to date with the scene especially the black thrash black speed scene I like to I try and keep keep up with what's going on um, I think that's important um, because yeah right now like music's in such a there's so many good bands right now. I think the metal scene is in like a really good place in terms of constant music coming out with so many great new bands. And you've got like, you know, newer bands doing really good things. Um, you know, for example, let's say just because they were in Scotland a couple of days ago, like Undeath, they're a relatively new band and they've kind of experienced loads of success and Devil Master, one of my favorites, they're relatively new. Um, they're doing massive stuff and releasing really good music. Um, but yeah, it depends what mood I'm in. Sometimes I'll just listen to yeah, old school like Annihilator or Metallica and stuff. But yeah, it's a mixture. Depends. Depends, really. Depends on the vibe of the day. Well, Jim, yeah. thank you very much. The vibe of the day today was great talking to you. So I know you're super busy. So honestly, thank you very much for taking the time today to chat with me. And, and best of luck with the release of Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags on February 17th, Peaceville Records. Once again, thank you. Thank you very much, man. Really appreciate it. Oh, take, take care.